Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Tour Operator by Keep Exploring Games. Tour Operator is a game in which you're going to be playing as a tour operator. You're going to be manipulating people onto a plane as well as funding, pushing them onto different hotel areas and moving the planes around so they get to their destination. Your objective is to keep your passengers and your clientele as happy as possible, allowing them to go to the most locations they possibly can and the most exciting locations as you possibly can. As you do that, you're going to gain victory points, and if you're not able to do that, you're going to lose points. You're going to be moving throughout the plane, whether it's going to be first class seating or basic seating, as well as they're going to be in the hotel lobbies and the the lobbies of the airports and then there's of course the dorm rooms the VIP rooms and the locations which they're going to go to which could have more entertainment value more historical value and you're just trying to gain more points throughout that ga the game doing those kind of things so let's go down below and check out the game and see how you play the game tour operator so here we have the game tour operator and I've went ahead and set it up for two players although the secondary player is just kind of a ghost and he's off the board so we're gonna be focusing on a singular player and how a turn takes place for him or her when you start the game you're going to select a color so with is red here along with a colored plane and then the first player mark will be given to the first person maybe that was on a plane in which case you're going to have a clean room for each of these rooms here as well as a clean seat for each of these three seats here you're going to make sure that the red marker or whatever color marker you are is off of this happiness track and the tourist location is empty along with all the other spaces we are also going to do a four by four grid for a two-player game and it expands depending on the number of players in a two-player game it's going to be seven rounds and it is reduced by three at three and four it reduces rounds these over here are actually going to be your currency in the game you're going to have first of all green for the clean seats then you're going to have uh, the orange for the clean rooms these yellow are going to be for happiness which will in increase these guys here and then finally black which is fuel it will let you move your plane around the board to start the game it's pretty simple you're going to do a tourist draft and depending on the number of players it'll be x plus one so right here I've got a two-player game so it's two players plus one and he will go ahead and draft. So he'll go ahead and pick one and put it down and move it to the happiness track based on the symbol here. The next player will pick one as well. And then you're going to remove this one. And then you'll do this again. And you're going to do this four times so that now he gets to choose one first. And then this player will get to choose one and move it on their happiness track and discard. And it'll keep going until finally everybody fills up. If there's only one person at four, one person at three, the person at three will actually just get to choose between two of them. So there won't be a third one available. So I'll just go ahead and fill up these slots really quick with tourists. Okay, so now move up their happiness track based on what it is. Now, the tourist cards have different things that are required. This person can go in a dorm room and it takes they, they stay two days in the hotel. This is just staying two days. This is staying at a luxury room, which is going to be the VIP room, and one day, and this is for three days. Over here are going to be what they're looking forward to in vacation areas, such as Cusco, Rome, Paris, or London, and it'll tell you the point value on all of the cards along with what they're going for. You can choose between the two of them. After the drafting has taken place, you're then going to go ahead and roll for resources in turn order. You're gonna take all five of these die and roll them, and there is a plethora of different things you can roll. So the question mark, I believe, is going to be wild, and you can choose between anything. You've got the clean seats, happiness tickets, uh, the employees, and the fuel, as well as the wild, and um, I think something else. The, oh, the, the clean rooms right here. So now we're going to go ahead and let's just say he got this so I can show you what everything does. So he'll take his happiness ticket, which is he'll go ahead and take one of these guys here. He'll take a clean, uh, here we go, clean seat for his plane. He'll take a employee. So when you take an employee, you draw three cards, flip them over and choose them. And there's three different types. You've got the employee for the plane, so like the uh, pilot. You've got the office employee and the hotel employee. And as you can see, you've got the pilot here. You've got the hotel and another hotel. So once you pick one of them, you're gonna set them in the slot and then discard the rest of them. You're only ever gonna have one in each slot and if you want a new one, you have to remove that one. Some of them last forever, other ones are discarded. It'll tell you here whether or not it gets discarded. A trash symbol means remove it whenever you want. And then the forever means it's gonna have a little circle. So this one says plus one victory point for each passenger. When you discard that, you're gonna get victory points for each passenger, which is good. That's how you get victory points. That's how you win the game. Uh, then you're going to go on to this one, which is a simple fuel, which allows you to travel throughout the board. And then finally, you're going to have the uh, clean 
there we go, the, the uh, clean rooms there. So those are the five different types along with the wild, which is just a question mark. All right, so let's move on here. Now it says lower the weak count of each tourist by one and discard it zero. These are the weak counts right here. So you're gonna have these little red symbols up here and whenever you place a passenger into the here and then they go into here, uh, whenever they're in these rooms here, they're gonna maybe start at three, they'll go down to two, down, then down to one and so on and so forth until eventually zero and they'll get removed. Uh, this basically just clogs up the area. So you wanna put passengers in that are lower, except they might require some more different things and maybe more difficult to work with. Everything is going to have a cost though in this game. After you've gone ahead and removed the, the weak trackers down, you're gonna go ahead and board tourists and then choose a city. So let's go ahead and board tourists. We can board up to three of them and we will go ahead and choose to board Nicole and that will remove the clean seat. And we will go ahead and board up Stephanie and I'll remove this one. And then we'll go ahead and board Denise. So now we've gone ahead and boarded up three tourists and now we're going to go ahead and fly to a location. You can fly anywhere on your side of the board. So if it's a four player game, you're here, another opponent's here and then another person and another person. Otherwise a two player, it's just back and forth on each side. And we'll just go ahead and spend one fuel to fly right there from outside the board. If we wanted to, we can go two and go here, but we'll just go ahead and go hit here. And then we're gonna score. So we'll look at these symbols here and we'll choose the highest value. So shopping is four and then the little uh, little mountains here are two. So we'll go with four points there and we'll go with two points and two points. So that'll give us eight points all together. Then um, we'll go ahead and take the tourists and place them into clean rooms. And this one can actually go into a dorm, so we'll put them here. If we had another one, it can go into a dorm, but only ones in dorms that have dorm symbols can go in the dorms. And then we'll go ahead and take Stephanie, and we can put her here, and we can take Denise, and we can put her here. She has a VIP symbol on here, so she has to go in the VIP room. You're never allowed to not put them in the room. So if there is a room that's not available, then you can't put them on it here. And if you were to put them on a dirty seat, it's going to cost you minus one point. And if the tourists leave, it's gonna cost you three points. There's a bunch of ways you can lose points in this game. After you've gone ahead and moved them all to their rooms, you're gonna go ahead and select the days and put them on there. That says two, this says one, and this says two right there. Then you're going to organize an activity. And you look at the card on which you've placed your plane on, and that is the little walking symbol guy. So you can go ahead and take this, and in a two-player game, you'll be using all of these symbols. In a three-player and in a four-player, Player, you use everything. But we're playing a two player, so he can go ahead and place it here, here, or here. And you're trying to go across ways. So if you go across, you're going to gain victory points. So bam, I've got the walker here. If I can get these two symbols, I'll get three points. And you can get a total of two of them. So I'll just remember that. All right, so after you've done that, you're going to go ahead and increase the waiting for patience. So there's only these guys are no longer here, so they got to go ahead and put to the side. But this guy's still here and he's waiting for a plane, so he's not very happy. He's going to go ahead and move down to this track here. When once again, if he goes to that sad area, that means he's going to leave and you'll lose points. However, you can, if you want to spend any of these tokens at any point in time, you can do that and that'll help you out. So for instance, if I went and spent this green token here, I can clean a seat for the plane. If I wanted to spend this token here, I could clean a room, which I can't right now because they're still in there. And then I can use these happiness tokens. I can spend one and move his happiness back up on the track there. Then the next player would get the first turn symbol and you would start dealing out tourists once again, going to the economy seats, moving your or playing around the board. Whenever you land on an area two, it's gonna get flipped over so nobody else can use that, it'll be gone. And then you'd move it to a new location based on your fuel, put, moving these things down, making sure they're out by the time you put new guys in, and trying to maintain everything while keeping your employees, a office, motel, a hotel, as well as the uh, flying, the, the, the plane dude, and just basically encircling the board. And as the game continues, this board is gonna get smaller and smaller, and it's gonna be harder for you to select different locations, trying to get the best locations for your characters based on these symbols here, as well as the symbols over here. If you can get all, all three of these, all three of these, three, or even four of these, you'll get three, 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 and five points. Whoever has the most victory points at the end of seven rounds is gonna be the winner for Tour Operator. So let's go ahead and tell you what I think about it. So Tour Operator has a lot going for it, as you can see. It's got its tableau management, it's got its card management as far as employees go, and it also has a little bit of a Euro and movement around the board. You wanna secure the best locations for you and the people that you've put on your 
plane as well as into your hotels. You want to score points whenever you're going across the board and make sure they're the, the most happiest. They're getting to the locations they want, all while making sure your plane is clean and they're able to go into the specific rooms they need to go into. Obviously, you can lose points when you make your tourists leave because they don't make their plane or they can't get into a clean hotel room. So everything has to be managed. And you do feel like a tour operator in this game. You have to control everything while if you still can do that as well as controlling what your opponents are doing, making sure they're getting the least amount of points as possible. And it's likely you're going to have people leave your plane. It's likely they're not going to be able to get into clean rooms or even maybe the least like least worst thing that can happen is they just get into a dirty seats on the plane and it'll just cost you negative points, a couple of them. Let's go and talk about some of the employees and why I like these guys. This guy here says change one die to any side and it lasts forever and it stays in your, uh, what's this one, the office one. That's really good as well. Minus one day for a guest at a hotel. So that's super good as well. It's reusable. You can trash this girl for draw new tourists again and choose from both drafts. You can clean one of your seats with this guy every round. Clean all seats from this one, but you have to discard them and so on and so forth. So these are kind of like action cards that can be used either continuously or instantly. The instant ones are going to be a lot better as far as effects go, but the ones that are continuous are going to be useful throughout the game. And you can exchange them if you want, but you can't have more than one in each slot. You've also got the tourists, which are really cool because some of them are going to be really easy going, but they're going to take a long time to leave. So you're not going to be able to get new. You want them to get in and get out and get as much points as possible. But if you got a bunch of threes stuck in your hotel room for three days, then you're not going to be able to get them out and you're not going to be able to put new people in to score more points, which is what you want to do. However, the people that are going to be like less less difficult, like her maybe, she oh, she's actually pretty good because she can go, go into a dorm room and two people can go into a dorm room. So that's pretty good. Let's find one that's a little more, a little more challenging, I suppose. Uh, this one here has to be in a VIP room, but he's out in one day. So that's great, but you have to have that VIP room clean and nobody can be in there. Here's another one for two days. Uh, this one here says a plus one for shopping. So if the shopping is a four, whenever you put him in a shopping location, that's going to give him five points, but he also has to be in a VIP room. Some of them require VIP seats and others you're going to want to put in only because on the board, it's closer on your plane to get to locations that facilitate maybe historical monuments or shopping more than it would something else like architecture or uh, partying, right? So it kind of weighs on you as you're sitting there deciding that. Uh, the game gets more challenging as time goes on because you're going to be losing locations and making your opponents suffer by having them go to the only locations you can. You can also swoop on to locations that they are not able to go on because once you place your your helicopter on a sp specific location, they can't go there as well, which can be extremely detrimental. The more players in a game, the less l nice it's going to be because everybody's going to be, com be competing for the uh, best spots on the in, in the world. And if you can control those best spots, then you're going to be doing very well. A negative I can give for the game is that because it's turn-based when you're rolling, you kind of get an idea of what people are already going to do if you're rolling last. So you can then kind of set up your turn to mess them up if you want to. So if you got a lot of people that are like really really mean they can think ahead based on the fact that they can see that i think it'd probably be better if everybody rolled at the same time and then set up their their stuff hidden and then show, then showed and then placed and then didn't turn order because then you wouldn't have people setting up their turn to mess over somebody else. But maybe if you like that because you're a little more competitive, you'll find that to be enjoyable. The art is spectacular in the game. I like it. I like the fact that you have the different locations as well as the different the plane and all these different player boards and they all kind of interact with each other in different ways. It has great flow. Uh, the gameplay is super fun, super competitive, and it can also be nice too, which is kind of cool. The less players you play the more likely it's going to be a little nicer, but it's going to turn into one of those heavy, like those those more thinky games, right? It's not analysis paralysis. It's pretty quick, and you feel like the turns are flying by. So if you like the theme of being a tour operator and you enjoy that little Euro slash Tableau management, you're going to enjoy this game as well. But like I said, I'd prefer it if the dice rolled quickly. Overall, though, Tour Operator is a fun game. I do recommend it.